The title of my message today is Who Loves Dessert? Yeah, uh, I'm already tempted. I didn't eat lunch. So I know that this uh, topic doesn't sound too spiritual to you guys, but I believe that this affects our spirituality big time. And uh, I know that most of us, we love sweets, we love um, desserts, and uh, often we have to, it's, uh, we are like usually, on, we're battling this temptation because we kind of know that it's not really healthy, but we still, you know, are always tempted to uh, take a bite. So today we're going to talk about um, gossip, about slander. And we will find out why uh, it's uh, why in the Bible, why is it compared, why is it associated with uh, desserts. And um, I would like to, in my introduction, tell you that I believe, guys, that uh, our tongue and uh, sins that we commit, by the way, through, uh, through our words, I think it's one of the biggest uh, temptations we face on a daily basis. I think big sins like, you know, adultery and uh, other uh, murder, they are very um, understandable. They are very, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, we try to avoid those. But when it comes to gossip, when it comes to slander, we don't really pay attention. We are so, sometimes we are immune to that. We are used to uh, talking like that. We are among people who gossip around us. And I think anything that has to do with our tongue, the way we speak, we talk, it's a daily temptation. It happens so often that we don't even realize how we're getting used to this. So first let me present to you the definition of what slander is. It's false information or false charges that are, uh, that are said by someone to damage someone's reputation. Basically, it's something that a negative information when we accuse someone of something and we are not sure if it's true. We're not sure or we know that it's not true, but we still spread this information. Gossip, next definition. Gossip, it's a rumor. It's uh, an information about someone, uh, once again, that is not confirmed. It's not confirmed that it's true. You heard it through someone, from someone, and you just pass this information on without checking, without verifying, without knowing 100% that it's true. Uh, so my first point is the meaning and the power of slander and gossip. In uh, President Abraham Lincoln, he died in, he died in 18, 1865. And there was this gossip going around that the president never died. So 22 years, 22 years later, some people, because gossip has such power, they went to this grave and they digged him out and they wanted to check if he really died or not. Seems like, wow, there are uh, many uh, people came to take pictures. Seems like it was, a, some people might say it was foolish. But 14 years later, once again, the power of gossip. Some people started sharing once again that president re didn't really die. So they had to do it again. Can you guys imagine this poor dead guy? They undicked him twice. And uh, because of this gossip that was going around. Did you guys know that the, what animal kills the most people per year? Any idea what animal kills the most people per year? It's a tricky question. It's not a lion. It's not cheetah, it's little mosquito. This little monster, Google says that it kills over a million people per year. Now, in order for this not to become gossip, you have to check on Google, right? Because I'm just transferring you information. That's how gossip starts. Whatever I just told you, if you take and you pass this information on, it could become gossip. Did I catch you? So that's how it starts. So you, 
we as believers we are responsible before we transfer any information before we pass any information to check to make sure that it's true so if if it's true what google says that over a million people are are um die because they got bitten by this little mosquito it's just a a good illustration that shows how little 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 creature can cause so much damage can take lives and the bible talks a lot about this little creature that we have inside of us this little tongue this little animal monster i don't know how should i how should i call this how it damages people kills people cuts people the bible says that the tongue is compared to fire it can burn people can burn relationship can burn everything to the ground and you know when there is a conflict tongue is always involved always the tongue is also compared from uh, based on the scriptures compared to the blade it can cut it can bleed and it can dump, and it, it also compared to poison it, it's toxic that's why I was surprised how much Bible talks about gossip and slander. New Testament and Old Testament talks a lot about gossip and slander. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 it says but now in the time but now is the time to get rid of to get rid of what? To get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander and dirty language. Slander, slander that's what is um, usually uh, slander it's either not true or it's halfway true or it's my truth from my perspective usually when we share information or when we gossip we are so sure that I am saying the truth but don't forget it's your truth from your perspective when you hear the other side they will have another a different truth that's why slander it's not it's not just it's not true it can be halfway true or it can be just your side your truth proverbs 10 18 it says hiding hatred makes you a liar slandering others makes you a fool god he hates slander and gossip and I will read you from scripture from Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16 through 17 and the list is not long the Bible says that God hates seven things I believe that me and you we hate more than seven things right but I'm pay attention the list what God hates is not that long but one of these things what God hates is slender is when we talk evil about others when we put other people down this is what the scripture says seven things that he detests proud eyes a lying tongue false witness and people who sows discord or slander or gossip when they talk when they misrepresent other people in a negative way or when they present them in a negative way have you ever uh, thought about why people gossip why do people gossip some people say uh, because they have nothing nothing better to do why people gossip because they don't know the scripture and they next slide they don't know what to um they don't know what god says about about this um about gossip and slander maybe they're not mature spiritually enough maybe they are looking for attention because when someone tells something really really uh, even though it's not true people they get attention and uh, also sometimes people are dealing with their insecurities so they are also gossiping and uh, one of the biggest reasons what is uh, one of the reasons that is that is uh, presented in the scripture why people love to gossip is because gossiping is compared to dessert let me read you proverbs chapter 18 verse 8 the words of a gossip are like choice morsels they go down into the inmost parts rumors are dainty morsels different translation says whisperer are like delicious morsels so the reason why 
the title of my message today is who loves desserts because most people they love desserts and sweets and the bible compares gossiping and sl and even though we understand that gossiping is not good we know that slander it's a sin the bible talks a lot about it but it's a temptation i'm sure we deal with this temptation at least once a week do you agree and even though we, we, whether we have decided that we're not going to eat sweets because we know it's unhealthy, we have either promised that we're not going to do this to us, we we're on a diet, we're on this super diet, but every time someone offers us this, we're always tempted, always tempted, always. We're battling with our mind, even though we are like uh, trying to rebuke this in the name of Jesus, but in our hearts we already swollen, swallowed all these beautiful brown stones <laughs> so first why people usually gossip is because they love sweets and the bible compares gossiping to sweets and you know physically you have to fight it you have to discipline yourself not to dig in in this spiritually it works in the same way usually we don't like we like gossip. We, we say we don't love gossip, but we like gossip as long as it's not about us. Another thing about gossiping that's also a self um, a test for all of us, uh, how we, if we forgave others who were gossiping about us, we like gossiping, especially when we hear gossiping about someone we don't, we didn't really like anyway. And then it becomes, it tastes even better. Second reason why usually people gossip or slander others is because sometimes they do it unintentionally. They just trust other people. They have respect to other people. And because they hear this from someone who they respect, they just um, accept it. They don't verify they because it's a friend it's a you know it's respected someone who you respect you love someone who is close told you this we just accept it and we just pass it on without checking if this information was actually true or not people we as humans we're always tempted to either exaggerate add or or um uh looking for a word uh It was a good thought. <laughs> uh, people uh, sometimes like, they like to twist information and twist some facts. And sometimes it's unintentionally. When someone is telling us we are against gossip, we know that the Bible forbids us to do so. But because sometimes we are unintentionally, we pay attention to what we're listening to, we can fall into this pit of gossiping or judging other people number three why people gossip or slander others is because they have this strong desire inside to fight for justice who is for justice who is against justice <laughs> seems like everyone is like it's not just it's not fair we have to fight and when you hear someone who came to you called you texted you and they and they shared this horrible story how people mistreated them how they were so unfair to them how they beaten them by their words how they uh, they caused so much pain when you hear this you're like <gasps> this is so unfair and you right away you are ready to fight text post ready to do everything to defend that person because you are for justice but do you know are you sure that it's truth? Have you heard the other side? When you listen to the other side, you will be like, whoa, the story is way different. But because we have this, uh, I don't know what it's called, that lives inside of us, that we're always willing to fight for justice. You know how many people died? Millions of people died because they were fighting for justice. You know how many wars we people went through around the world because they were fighting for justice. And do you think we have justice today? Because they used wrong methods to fight for justice. 
we as believers we know that people treated Jesus very unfairly it was so unjust but his technique his approach to unjust moves was way different he was so silent but the silence was so powerful that now he has Jesus has millions of followers because of his approach to injustice that's why we should be very careful when we hear someone who is offended treated unfairly and we want to fight for justice hold on hold your horses be careful because you may be potentially you just fell into the pit of gossip because you just heard one side you haven't even you don't even know if it's 100 percent true if it's halfway true or if it's just his truth from his perspective Sec uh, step number four what you can do when uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry step number four why uh, people love gossiping is the Bible says first Timothy chapter 3 verse 11 it's a warning to all of us I don't think it's only really it's only it, it does it's not only for women but it's for all of us even though here in this context it says in the same way their wives must be respected and and must not slander others Titus chapter 2 verse 3 it says they must not slander they must not slander it's not a recommendation it's it's a command that we read uh, in, in the scripture I'm sure that if you have kids that are married just imagine imagine if you have kids that are married and then uh husband it's your son-in-law comes to you and says how horrible his wife is and his wife is your daughter will you believe this guy will you repost what he said will you text everyone what he just said about your daughter will you share with everyone how horrible your daughter is or what will you do or will you say well that sounds interesting i think i have to at least talk to my daughter don't you agree that that's what you will do at least talk to your daughter and hear her side right and when you hear the other side seems like wow so the truth is somewhere in the middle maybe but when other people tell us and accuse someone how often we fall into this pit we just transfer we just pass this message to others I need to confess that I this this beginning of this year when we were fasting as a church I was fasting for several days I was praying I felt so good in my spirit felt like I was like so spiritual so strong and then time passed by not not it was not too long that after that I said something that Holy Spirit convicted me big time I couldn't sleep at night I had to go and apologize and my lesson from this story is very simple that we are to be on guard every day it doesn't matter even if you go to church even you know gossiping is not good even though you know the scripture even though you are fasting you should still be on guard every single day that's why apostle paul is writing that i die daily to myself daily it's not a one-time decision okay i'm not going to do this anymore i'm against gossip good good i'm against gossip too but you know we're all tempted my top my goal is not to just tell you you are sinners you are gossiping we're all we're all we're, we're dealing with this temptation every day every week we're dealing with this temptation because it tastes good we like it sometimes we just we said we're not going to do this anymore but every every time someone is offering this someone is confronting us someone is accusing someone bringing us information we live we communicate to people it's unavoid unavoidable but we are to learn how to react properly when we receive information from other people why gossip is so dangerous why gossip is very very dangerous jeremiah chapter 6 verse 28 it says they are worst kind of rebels full of slander they lead others into corruption first of all people who are gossiping they they're leading others into this sin it's not enough for them to gossip just me 
and I usually I don't gossip with me myself I need at least someone to make it fun so it's something that leads to other sins it involves drags other people into this into this um, pit especially nowadays when we live in this world of technology and social media anyone who posts whatever he wants he, he doesn't carry any responsibility. Whatever he's saying, spreading, he, he, he doesn't feel responsible for what he said. He doesn't care how it's going to affect other people. And we read, sometimes we share, reshare, we post, repost. Very rare Then we check, hold on guys, is this true? Is this his truth? Is it halfway truth? Is this gossip? Am I, did I, how did I... God, I, I'm not, I don't even know, I got sucked in into this. And with social media nowadays, it affects church, it affects Christian people, it damages church, it damages us. And the and devil is rejoicing. But I'm, I, I believe that God is grieving when he's looking at this, when he's looking at us, us, his people. That's why we read so many scriptures about this matter. Romans chapter 1 verse 30 through 32. It says slanderers, and then there's a long list. They deserve death. Wow, it's New Testament. They not only continue to do these very things, but also approve those who practice them. So they know that it's wrong. But somehow intentionally or unintentionally, they got into this mood, into slandering and gossiping. And because they need company, because sinners often they need company. That's why it's very important who do you fellowship with? Who is your circle of friends? How they affect you? Do you affect them or they affect you? You might say, well, I don't affect them. They don't influence me. They don't influence me. I'm neutral. I'm good. You know what? It's only true temporary. Sooner or later you will either influence them or they will influence you. Imagine a guy who is climbing a rock and you have a heavy backpack. So you're going up, you're climbing up, you're, you're uh, growing spiritually. And then you got stuck. At one moment, you, you pause. You are neutral. You are not influencing anybody for how long this will last. Sooner or later, you will either go down or <sighs> up or down, right? So when you're saying you're neutral, you're not influenced by anyone. It's true, temporary. But then the question still remains. Do you influence them or they influence you? Friends, company, the Bible says bad companies, they corrupt good morals. Yes, they influence you. So we are to watch out who we fellowship with. I remember Nellie, when she was doing Bible study in our church, she had those rules. And one of the rules was no gossiping, no judging. Very interesting, very rare. You don't come to a home where they present you these rules. Welcome to our home. By the way, don't gossip. But that's what she did. And it was beautiful. And ladies loved it. Yeah, it was a battle. You know, it was always a battle, you know. Because when you're around drinking, talking, and uh, you're tempted, you know, to chew on, on these things, you know. But that's, I am praise God for, for the light. That some people, they just turn on the light and the darkness flee. That's what we are called to do. I know that, let me uh, present you um, a, a picture why gossip is so dangerous. Why it's so dangerous. So um, this metal garbage can represents a person. A person that is good, normal, average person. And this person is someone else. Imagine it's you. You're trying to slander. You're gossiping about that person. So basically you're damaging that person. Emotionally or physically. You're abusing them by your words. You're hurting them. So let's push this person, okay? Now, this guy, he's gonna gossip about that person. So let's see how it feels when you gossip about someone. Yeah, hold on, stop. Okay, you see, this uh, can is not as round anymore as it used to be. You see, it used to be, you know, nice, round, good. But now let's beat them a little bit more. Let's gossip a little bit more about them. Let's slander them big time. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's enough. Was it painful? 
Was it painful? How did you feel? And then, uh, so when we look at this person, this is how this person, uh, uh, yeah, it's hard to imagine that, imagine this is a person, okay? So that's how they are, how they feel inside. They're hurt, they're beaten, they are, they are damaged by words. So uh, he understood that this was wrong. So he decided to repent. So now uh, go and fix this guy. He's repenting, basically he's saying sorry, I didn't mean to say that. So he damaged his reputation and now he just fixed him. You see, this guy is already, basically he apologized. He apologized for what he did. But do you see that the marks are still there? Even though he regrets what he did. He repented, by the way. But marks are still there. That's what usually happens. That's why, that's why gossip and slander is very dangerous. Thank you, Max. One lady, she asked, one priest or rabbi, she said, tell me what gossip is. And he told her this story. He said, go out in the city and take a pillow filled with feather. You know, before they used to have them uh, pillars with feather and just tear it apart and let it fly. That's what she did. And many feathers, they were flying all over the city. And she came back to the priest and she said, uh, you know, uh, Rabbi, I did what you told me. Please tell me what gossip is. And he said, it's very simple. Thank you for doing what I told you to do. Now go back and put it all back together. She said, it's impossible. How, how am I supposed to do that? She said, it's all over the city. How can I catch it? I have no idea how far it went. That's exactly what gossip does. It's impossible to collect it back. It damages people. It flies much further than you think. This picture of this garbage can, you can try to restore it. Yes, you can do your best, but the reputation was damaged. His dignity, his emotions, his feelings, it's very toxic, very hurtful. That's why the Bible calls us to always stay on guard what we say about other people, especially when we share negative information about others. I love this saying, who gossips to you will gossip about you. Who gossips to you will gossip about you because they don't feel bad about gossiping. If they tell you negative information about other people and they don't stop themselves, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please make sure to hear the other side. I'm just telling you my side, my truth, but please make sure to listen to the other side. When they just share you information about others, negative information that they heard from someone, what makes you think that you will not be the next person who they will talk about. Proverbs 16, 28, it says, a troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates people. Gossip separates best friend. Gossip separates even marriage. Gossip separates and splits churches. Gossip is destructive and toxic. Proverbs 25, 23. So a gossiping tongue causes anger people get angry at each other because someone texted something someone told something about somebody proverbs 26 20 through 21 without wood a fire goes out without a gossip a quarrel dies down so gossiping it's like adding wood to the fire and i would like to show you one picture about the war in Vietnam. And on this picture, you see this innocent guy who is either emotional or scared. Then next to him, another guy 
who is holding a gun and is about to kill him. And then on my left, there is this uh, journalist. His name is Eddie Adams, who got so famous for taking this picture. He received the biggest award that journalists can receive for this picture during Vietnam War. This is what happened. You, what do you think? What do you feel? What do you see on this picture? I think it's pretty dramatic. I feel bad for this guy. I don't want to be in his shoes. He's about to be killed very harshly. This guy feels, seems like he's demonic, cold, very evil. Later in the story, this guy who is holding the gun after the war of Vietnam, he ended up in, in the United States. But because this picture went around US, because of this photographer, journalist who received an award, people started hating on this guy who is holding the gun. By the way, you don't even know if he, if he killed him or not. Do you know? Do you know if this guy have killed this guy? Do you know? Other people, some of them didn't know either. But because of this information that was spread, because of this information that went out, people had a, re a reaction. Justice. It's called, they fell into the pit of gossip because they didn't know that this guy got trapped by the police because he killed women and children. Not only he killed them, he burned them alive. And this guy, after he ended up in US, because people hated him so much without even knowing what happened to this guy, they tried to poison his kids. He was beaten, he was always running for his life, and then he slowly died. This photographer, Eddie Adams, at the end of his career, he said, I killed a person with my photo camera. Wow, seems like it's not just words, it's a document, it's a picture. It's a document, a legal document. It's a picture that represents the truth. You know what truth? What truth? His truth, your truth, my truth. This journalist, he wrote, People don't care about truth. They just care to react. That's how we live. They don't care about truth. Who got killed? Whose fault is that? Who is wrong? Whose side they hurt? They just react to what they have seen on the picture. What they have heard from someone. It's called gossip, slander. Do you see how we can all all of us were tempted, tempted to cause pain to other people. And this poor guy who was defending civils, who, like I said, you don't, even, you don't even know if he killed him. His family paid the price. He paid the price only because of one message that got spread around the country. That's what gossip does. And it's very dangerous. And we're all in danger. You know, if you like Greek, uh, some of you know that New Testament was written in Greek. And Greek, sometimes it's so deep, sounds so smart, and it tells us the meaning of the original word. Do you know what diabolos means in Greek? Do you like Greek? Uh, what about diabolos? <laughs> Do you know what it means? Slender. 
accuser. When there is slanding, gossip goes hand in hand. Anyone else who likes Greek? <laughs> or let's stick to, well, no, 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 Diabolos, it's not about us. But it's, it's just, you know, a side note for us to know the original meaning. So we would know where it comes from. Who is the initiator of all this movement of gossip and slander? Devil, he's the father of all lies. The most important for us today is to know how should we react. What, okay, gossip is bad, slander is not good, I, I got it, I understand. Most important is to know how should we react to this. How to respond, next slide, to slander or gossip. So, point number one. When you hear someone tell how to respond to slander or gossip, next slide. How, when you hear someone telling you a story, accusing someone, telling you negative information about someone, your first question, it should be a must for all of us, is do, do you know this information personally? Have you heard it from someone? Read it from someone? Or you have asked him personally? Or you know this personally? In many cases, the answer will be no. So, the first question should already stop us from, from spreading the news. Second question, did you listen to the other side of the story? If someone is accusing someone, if someone comes as a victim telling you how they have been treated unfairly, how they're hurt, always ask this victim, have you heard the other side? Or tell him this, I feel so, I feel sorry for you. I am sorry that you are going through this. Let's go and hear the other side. Do you want to go today or tomorrow? Today? Should we go right now? Um, uh, let's, let me pray about it. When you ask those two questions, you put the fire out right away, right away, right away. I know it doesn't happen too often. I know that it sounds very biblical, very practical, very biblical, very biblical. Not the way we're used to handle things. Every time you hear something, please make sure to ask, did you hear the other side? As a pastor, I often, you know, um, I am I'm encountering people who are in conflict, couples, marriages, who are in conflict. And when I hear one side, when I hear, you know, uh, uh, a lady, a husband or wife telling me how they are, what they're going through, they're so uh, miserable, they're so, um, not, don't even have enough words. When I listen to them, I feel like they have not a bad person living in their house. It's a monster. I don't even know how he fits in the house. He's a huge monster. But then, a day later, I talk to the husband or to the wife, and I don't see the monster anymore. I like... Whoa, the story is so different. But when I hear the first person, <gasps> I'm so pumped up to go and fight for justice. Who is for justice? The Bible says, Proverbs 18, 17. The first to speak, stop, 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 stop right there. The first to speak in court sounds right. Interesting. When you hear someone blaming someone, they are always right. You know why? Why they're always right? Why they're right? Because they're the first one. Very, very simple. And what do we do with this information? We need to put our daughter, our son, in the shoes of the person who is being accused. And then you, say, and then you should say, let me talk to my daughter. Let me talk to this uh, guy. Let me hear the other side. Do you want to come with me today or tomorrow? You know that he's going to pray about it. You know. You know that he's not going to go with you. And that's how we deal with gossip. It's the Bible. It's not just my ideas. I'm just reading you from the scripture. And even if you... Imagine this. Accident happened. And 
your car is totaled and the other driver is saying that it's your fault. And you, for some reason, you couldn't explain yourself or present your side, but it went to court. Police, he, uh, police officer, he just presented you as in, on, in fault. It's your fault. And the other guy, he's right. And you have to pay a huge fine, maybe some jail time, I don't know. And, uh, and then, what's wrong in this story? What is wrong in this story? Judge never heard, never heard your side of the story. Just based on this police officer's report, because he just heard this one driver, the other driver, he just blamed you that it's your fault. And it, but it's so unfair. Seems like you didn't hear the other side. Very often that's how we treat people. That's how we treat gossip. That's how we approach, we swallow these desserts because we, it sounds horrible. It tastes interesting, tastes very good good it's delicious we want to hear more but always remember to hear the other side or if you uh, step number four how to deal with gossip how we should react step number four is did you personally confront your offender when you are offended by someone it doesn't matter who it is and you a victim you become and you and you come and you share this information with others this is our human way to do, to, to, to solve this matter. But biblical way is when you are a victim, when you are offended by someone, please don't share this on Facebook. Please don't share this with your neighbors. Please don't share this with the other co-workers, friends, but go and talk to that person personally. Once again, it's not my method. Just reading straight from the scripture, Matthew 18, 15, it says, if another believer sins against you, go privately. Don't go on YouTube. Go privately. Don't go to someone else. Go privately to him, to that person, privately, you and him. And tell him, point out to him the offense. Tell him that you really hurt my feelings. I am offended. I am hurt. And I don't want to hold grudges against you. I don't want to spread gossip. The Bible teaches me that I am supposed to come to you. Even though I am so hurt, I don't even want to see you. I am so honest. I don't want to see you. You, you. You're a bad person. But I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. I want to be free from this. That's why I'm talking to you. And you might say, well, what... I shared with other people about that bad person it was true but please make sure to tell them when you are accusing someone please make sure to tell them I'm praying for that person I feel bad for that person I forgive that person let's pray for that person right now hmm sounds good seems like it's not about us but that's what heals because gossip and slander i believe it's like a cancer it destroys even the body of christ it destroys church it doesn't matter how smart how um how many years you have been coming to church we're all tempted you know we speak so many words every day can you imagine how many times the temptation is bigger to gossip or to slander than to do something else even if it's horrible even the most horrible sin. We're always to stay on guard. And the last, fourth point, how to react, what is the right response to slander or gossip is do not fellowship with gossipers. I already talked about it, how you should watch your environment, who you fellowship with. And it's okay to tell sometimes, please don't gossip in my presence. They will be so shocked. And you will be also shocked, pleasantly surprised about yourself. You can't even believe that you said that. Please don't gossip in my presence. I don't want this. I don't want to get dirty. I don't want to deal with this. We're called, let's talk about something positive that, that refreshes us inside, that renews us inside, that builds us up inside but don't just slander or gossip about other people. In that case, the question is, who should I share? With who should I share my feelings when I'm hurt? 
Because every time I say something about somebody, it seems like I'm gossiping. No. When you go to someone, if you are a victim, to someone who, who has power or can and willing influence that person who hurt you, then it's okay to go to them. But when you share this with your friends, with your chat, ch chat, chatting with other people, they have zero plans to go and solve this issue. They don't even have the desire to pray about you. They don't care how it's going to end. All they will do is like, just, you know, say, I'm, I'm sorry, that's it. They, they don't have power. They don't have the position. They're not uh, empowered to even solve this problem. It doesn't, it doesn't, it has nothing to do with them. That's when it becomes gossip. And God's reaction to gossip or slander, Psalm 50, verse 20 through 21, it says, When you slander, while you did all this, I remained silent, says the Lord, and you thought I didn't care, but now I will rebuke you, listening, listening all my charges against you. So God, he hears when people gossip and slander. This is the Lord talking himself. And he says, you thought that I didn't care. You thought I didn't hear, but I did. And I will rebuke, I will react. Yes, you will suffer consequences. And it's not just a guy who is saying, who is mad at you. God is warning us that we should not indulge in, into uh, uh, slandering or, or gossiping. Psalm 101 verse 5, it says, I will not tolerate people who slander. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. God is straightforward. I don't support slander or gossip. And then at the end of this verse, it says, I am the Lord. I'm sorry, that's the next verse. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 16. Leviticus 19 16. Do not spread slanders gossip among your people at the end of this verse it says i am lord whoa, whoa, whoa hold on what it has to do lord and seems like it doesn't fit there it seems like it's a different sentence how come it all it's all combined in one verse one thought same context lord is declaring that yes i am lord if someone is treating you unfairly or if you feel like you're abused, I'm Lord, I'm still God, I'm still on the throne, I have, everything is under control, please do not gossip, do not slander others, and if you do so, make sure to go through all these steps. Did you hear them personally? Did you know this information personally? Did you, do you know the other side? Do you hear, do you care about the other side? Because the truth is somewhere in the middle. Please, don't, don't, don't get pumped up. Don't fight for justice because you just heard one side. Did you talk to your offender personally? Did you talk to him personally first before you, were, before you told this to me? All these steps, they help us to react properly. That's why the God, God is saying, I am the Lord. And uh, often people, they... When they realize, when they come to their senses, they would sometimes call. Uh, I remember one guy, he sent letters around the country. He uh, shared negative information in the meetings against that one person. And then many years later, he called and he apologized to that person. He said, I'm sorry. Praise God, it's a good act of repentance. I'm sure God was pleased and I'm glad that this person realized that it was wrong. You know the, what the problem is still? He never sent the letters out again around the country. He never posted on YouTube or Facebook again about his apology. So that's why this garbage can should remain as in our memory as a picture what gossip or slander does to people. We can damage their reputation for many years ahead. That's why gossip is toxic. David Wilkerson, it's a preacher that I respect a lot. I still listen to him sometimes. You know that he was a prophet who prophesied many things, radical things, and they came to be true already. For example, he prophesied about the earthquake in Japan. 
he prophesied about gay marriages way before it was even discussed in a Supreme Court. And many things came to be true. And one of the things he said, he said, in the last days, the way devil will, devil will attack his church is people will slander and gossip about church, about priesthood, about pastors. You know why? I don't think this time came. I think it's going to come based on his declaration because it's very effective method to destroy people, destroy churches, destroy pastors, very effective method. If I tell you that I saw your husband or your son with a girl in a hotel or someone will make a post, just, you know, maybe it was true. Just this, if you imagine that it, if it has to do with you, you can find excuses, you know, for years. But this, you know, it's like you spill glitter. And then you say, I'm sorry, I spilled it. And now put it back. Can you put it back? All, all of it? That's what Gossip Slender does. And uh, I believe the devil, he's trying to destroy his church. And when he cannot penetrate from the outside, he will do it from the within, from the inside. That's why when people gossip, when believers slander and gossip, one preacher, he said, there's not enough oxygen. They need to get out. They need to get out and, uh, and do outreach. They need to get out and preach to people. They need to get out and get some fresh air because they are just eating each other. They have nothing better to do. And that's why we as believers must remember the devil, he's the father of all lies. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, it says that he is the accuser. He is the one. Diabolos in Greek represents slender, accuser, the one who gossips. He's on mission still today. He's still on the mission. Did you know how they got Jesus? How they killed Jesus? You remember they had many attempts. They wanted, they hated him. But just pay attention to little details how gossip can destroy, can kill, can damage so much. You know when Jesus, he was brought to the uh, priest, high priest, and they were accusing him. What did they do? They were looking for false witnesses. And one thing, pay attention. They accused Jesus of that, of this. They said, he said, I will destroy the temple and I will rebuild it in three days. Question, is this gossip? Jesus said, they accused him of that. I will, re I will destroy temple and I will rebuild it in three days. Question, is this gossip? In fact, Jesus never said that. Jesus, he said, you can check it out for yourself. He said, you destroy the temple and I will rebuild it in three days. Little twist. One little fact that was changed. That's how they accused Jesus. By using this method of gossip. And then you know how it ended. That's how gossip kills and destroys. And you know, even Pilate, he was a pagan. He was very cruel person. Even he, when he heard all these accusations against Jesus, he was not a brother. He was not a member of Living Stream. He said, hey, what about the other side? I heard your side. What about the other side? Have we heard the other side? Jesus, why don't you answer? Hmm, interesting. Question, are you better than Pilate? Are we better than Pilate? When we hear something, do we say, thank you. I feel sorry for you. Let's go right now and hear the other side. Today or tomorrow? Just asking. 
it's okay if we if you will not go i'm just saying you know pilot he did ask for the other side we all want god's presence we all want to be spiritual it seems like we are all seeking god's presence because we believe that god's presence impacts us changes us from inside out but you know what do we have to do to be in this presence let me read you from psalms 15 verse 1 1 through 3 who may worship him in your sanctuary who may enter your presence here we go his presence who may enter his presence on your holy hill those who lead blameless lives those who do what is right those who speak the truth from the sincere hearts and those who refuse to gossip wow god's presence holy spirit your word i love you lord but you love gossiping as well that's why you don't get to experience my presence as often as you would love to it's good to talk about it i know sometimes you fall into this pit unintentionally but we do need to declare a war to this movement of gossip and slander it destroys church destroys relationship kills relationship that's what the bible says and we're all in this circle of life we're all together we're all in this and that's why tongue your tone of voice the volume of your words it affects your spirituality it does affect yes your devotional your relationship with the lord gossip slander always affects relationship including god himself including our living god it always affects not only horizontally but also vertically it affects and kills relationship ephesians 4 it says chapter th uh, verse 30 do not bring sorrow to god's holy spirit how do we hurt holy spirit and then it gives us the list of sins we can do with our little creature it's called little tongue yeah that's how we deal with holy spirit holy spirit your tongue yeah connected kind of connected proverbs 18 21 it says the tongue can bring death or life we're about to pray right now brothers and sisters and i would like to ask you to be honest with with yourself right now and if you feel like you need to repent please bring this confession to the lord right now today and if you are going through some tough times and you know that it seems like it's impossible to come out of this it feels like the my problem my case it's like so it's impossible you are done that's it who is behind those words you remember diabolos the accuser the liar the one who slanders and gossips and is always against you and he's the liar who is telling you you are done that's it no 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 we know praise god that we know and if you didn't know i am here to tell you praise god that we know we have hope we have hope in jesus christ and those who have hope the lord says that you can fly you can have wings you can be above your circumstances and your problems they might not go away right away but you can fly above them because of hope so don't believe all these lies we have hope we have hope and with that hope we will move forward and we will deal with this on a daily and weekly basis I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.